Hello people, and welcome back to part 40 of the Noob's Guide to City Skylines. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Thanks so much for all the support last week, uh, when you guys very much enjoyed our take on a cargo harbour. A uh, really fun build to put together these ones. If you haven't played with them before, uh, just so many possibilities. Lots of excuses to use your larger, uh, more industrial assets in the city. And uh, the appropriate use of a one-way flow system uh, to keep all this traffic. Uh, moving around, and considering how many factories and warehouses and import and export centres we have in this part of the map, uh, traffic is a dream, to say the least, isn't it? So, happy days indeed. However, in today's episode, we are going to carry on developing the rural side of New York that I've been working on uh, for the last little bit of time, uh, to develop the first of the rural towns, and this one here is going to be Francis. So, building rurally is very much up my street, so to speak. It's uh, just better than most other types of building, I think. There's lots more creativity to be had, lots more open space to be played with. You know, we're playing city skylines, but I'd much rather play rural fields, I guess, right? That's what we, that's the, <laughs> that's the game. That's the game that I'm waiting for, all right? But in Francis, we do have some rare spots of fertile land uh, and a train line that we can use to construct the town. So let's have a talk about what we can do with some rural town designs in vanilla city skylines. So the first thing I'm going to do here is actually grab uh, a little bit of multi-directional uh, highway. Uh, just the one way going in each direction. Uh, just because I want to create a little bit of distance and using some highway roads to achieve this can really help with it. So I think I'm going to bring this one... I guess we might as well have it kind of run the duration of the hill, right? Because there's no point really having the walkability here. Because it's going to be too far for them to walk and if we do want them to walk then we can bring a pathway down. Uh, but there is also going to be buses heading up into Francis as well today. Cool. So we'll use this as a spine, okay, and we'll just allow the town to establish itself off of this frame. So we have mentioned that there is fertile land here, and, you know, we have built a farmland before. You know, we head over to Newby Oak's main five-star farmland, which is uh, integrated over this side. And, you know, we've covered all these sorts of designs before. And something that can be quite useful in cities to develop different looking areas is to use industry's DLC areas as part of the build, such as the Francis Farming Town that we'll be doing today. And you know, every time you come in to develop an industry's DLC area, don't be under the impression that you have to get it to level 5 every single time and it has to be this enormous industrial sprawling complex. That's really not the case. It could, usually they used to have like one of each type of the industries to 5 star in the town. After that, you can use them pretty sparingly. Okay, so looking for where the fertile land is sitting, I want to establish the farm fields first. And we're thinking we're going to have them sat sort of parallel and adjacent to this main country road that's coming through the area. So I'm going to use some of the new vanilla roads. We're going to save ourselves three tiles between this main town entry road and where the farms are going to sit. So of course we will need to drop in a farm area as to where the main building is going. I'm not entirely sure, but we'll just throw it down on the corner for right now and then just give this a pretty general painting again this probably might hit level two if we're lucky it's really here just to generate a tiny bit of money and also some uh, resource production for the city as well of course so we'll have that in there that's going to be great now let's dive into our farming fields so i know we want some small crop fields but we can change these into a greenhouse which is quite an appropriate aesthetic i think so I want a mix of greenhouses and fields, so I think I'm actually going to have a large crop field here. And then I want to change this one to the greenhouse, okay? So again, as we're driving into town, we can already get an impression of the facility that will sit alongside. I'm going to be happy with that, I think. And then we'll just keep extending these roads out. And then what I'd like to do now is to essentially surround uh, the warehouse here, or the plantation, uh, with regular fields if you like okay so we can really piece them together uh, i can see a perfect opportunity here where one's going to sit in back to back and we can just piece them assets together like this if you are playing with move it then you know things like this do become uh, considerably easier so why don't we go for corn or wheat i think i do prefer the aesthetic of wheat yep let's go for wheat then this one's already wheat yep and this one will be wheat as well Cool. So just by configuring the fields in this sort of fashion, again, there's many different shapes and sizes that can be done uh, to generate something like this. And we can just have a nice little facility here, okay? It looks like it's all kind of based around the greenhouse, like the greenhouse is here to service the fields, even though it is 
for individual field assets from the industry DLC, right? So you get the impression of how we can be a little bit more creative with things like that. Okay. And then again, there's plenty of detailing opportunities here. If you are going to be doing tree detailing around your farmland areas, uh, then it is important that you don't paint them over the fertile land because it will delete it. I'll show this in practice. See here, we have a bunch of fertile land. I place trees around it. You see it disappears. And then if we delete the trees after the fact, you see that the fertile land doesn't come back. So just be careful of that. Once you do place a tree on it, you won't get it back. Okay. So I think a little row of live oaks here. Again, a sensible distance from the fields. I don't want them right next to it. Should just give us a nice little time on the drive into town, right? I don't think that's too bad. Of course, there's many different little farm assets that can be added onto this if you want it to start producing uh, animal products. I know that we do have uh, a substantial amount of demand uh, for animal products over by the port, so it could be uh, a good shout to actually bring some animal products over here. I think we'll decide that later. Yeah, I think for right now, we're just going to leave the fields in. And this will give us a nice little approach uh, into Francis, won't it? Okay, some of those fields and greenhouses through the trees as they drive into town. Provide some jobs for people in Francis too. So let's have a look at the actual town road layout itself now. See what we can do with this. Alright, so with the town centre itself, I really want to factor in the historical train station into the build. So I want to see if we can just grab a little bit of this rail line here. Now I'd ideally like it as to where it sort of straightens out. That's going to make my life a little bit easier. So let's go for about here. Okay, and let's just check the length of that train station just to see how much room uh, we're actually going to need. Of course, this is available with the uh, modern city center. Modern, no, modern mid-century content creator pack, is it? I think it is, isn't it? Yes, it is that one. And if you are missing any of the DLCs or content creator packs that we're using in today's episode, do check out the link to Instant Gaming down below. Super ridiculously cheap codes, and it does help support the channel. Okay, so that's going to be good. We'll have this here. Let's come up to probably about there, I think, and then let's break this train line connection. And then this should be happy enough for us to hook in. Let's go for about there, okay. Nice historical old sort of rural station. It's gonna blend in uh, quite nicely with the vibes that we've got today. And then we can just snap all this back, uh, just so we've got a slightly easier time hooking it all in. That you're just gonna hook onto a road guideline. Let's keep it straight for a little bit just because it's going to make building that a little bit easier and then we can worry about connections in. Same again over here as well too. Let's come onto a road guideline with a curve tool and happy connections. There we go. Cool. And then any nasty terrain work that generates itself can just be flattened out. There we go. Tremendous. So now that we've got this, I'd like to bring out a little stretch of road. Let's say by 15 units. So we'll find 15 there. Then we can bring that one up as well. That's 15 going to be there. Cool. And now I'd like to bring this one up. So we can see where this is going to connect in. Probably about there. So what I'd like to do now we have the train station hooked into the road network is to have a look at sort of a new axis where we can develop a little town centre shape from. So if we bring up a road from this one here, we know that we're parallel with this one. Just because we've got the 90 degree angle snaps down here. And then we can bring it in line with this road guideline here. And then just by drawing out the shapes like this, we should be able to develop uh, some fairly little interesting sort of more shapes if we like. So let's bring this one down on a 90 degree angle as well. Okay, we're going to get some shattered zoning, but we're not too bothered about the zone in the middle here. Okay, so this is going to generate something of a little town centre shape from the train stations. There. We definitely want to respect the train station as part of this design. Okay, that's not too bad, is it, I don't think? And any road upgrades we want to do, that can be done later. You know, maybe we want the road that goes through town to be this little grass medium one we got with the update. That might be quite tasteful. Again, it can all be changed at a later date, of course. And then I want to see if we can find sort of a unique building that's really going to fit this sort of central space. So I have been looking at a few of the uh, new Seaside Resorts content creator ones, although we did use these for kind of the country estate. I think it will sort of work as like maybe like an old hotel. I hope that is a hotel, is it? Uh, I guess, yeah, I guess they're all hotels, right? But uh, I think it's a little sort of general town centre shape. Or town centre feature, I suppose. I don't think I'm uh, overly averse to it. Okay. But again, I can see some designs forming that I might want to uh, pay respect to. So there's a part with trees here that won't fit, but I think I don't really want the concrete pathways. But let's knock this back a touch. Let's go ahead and just 
decide we want it there. Then we're going to throw in a little town, a little park here. Let's see if we can move it along a little bit. Probably to about there. And that works to extend those pathways out. Okay, so we've got a little park. And now I feel like that hotel might just have a little bit more sort of place and purpose, if you like, as it sits. Uh, sort of down this little mall from the town centre now. Okay. Not too bad, I don't feel. Uh, I do want to go ahead and get the rest of the area painted out for Francis though, because I do want to play with uh, European suburbia housing for this, ideally. Just because it's kind of the most rural looking. You can be selective with some of the lower level vanilla assets, but uh, European suburbia just does a job. So let's go ahead and set that. We will go for European suburbia. We haven't used modern mid-century housing yet in Noob's Guide. We will at some point, I promise. Cool. So now it's just a case of drawing out a few different sort of angles and shapes from this main frame. Let's leave the road guideline on and then just see what we can sort of establish through these areas. Let's not always snap into the grid. Let's leave some different shape zoning squares available for development. Okay. Happy with that for a little suburbia space to come up here. Perhaps we can bring one up through here as well where this road meets with it. Uh, I don't really like that curve though. Let's go ahead and change that. Let's go for that one. And then let's bring that down out here actually. So let's meet the guideline and bring it in. There we go. And then perhaps this frame can now snap out and meet up with another road guideline. And then just by following this little format here of snapping to guidelines and different angles, you will just start to generate some slightly more organic and I hope you agree, more interesting road infrastructure. Maybe we can come into a slight curve tool here if we want to. Maybe hit this guideline. It comes back down and out from this one. Okay, let's have that in there. Let's bring this one off. You're not going to be happy there. No, let's not. Let's bring this one out then. Let's create this box first. And then what we'll do is with that road guideline, we'll allow that curve to come in and then generate it from there. Okay. So sometimes the road guideline, oftentimes we tend to avoid it just by playing with it and really paying attention to it. And we can bring in some more organic road network shapes, I think. Okay. And I definitely think just because we've got the rail line here, this is going to be a really fun design uh, to factor into the town. So I think I'm going to have some houses uh, that run right up next to the railway. And you know, this might be a highway in your map. Maybe you want some uh, houses near a high speed road. Could also be a monorail line if you're playing with monorail instead. Trams, etc. Doesn't have to be trains. Okay, but there we go. So now we've got this road coming sort of out of the town. Let's treat this as like a little bit of a main street, if you like. Uh, and I'm wondering if we should actually maybe upgrade this into uh, a larger road. Just to see what sort of effect that would give us. Is it something that I hate? It allows us to generate a little bit more of a main street vibe, doesn't it? Through the rural town. Through Francis. I think I'm going to go for it. Uh, and then hopefully, yeah, you're, you're not going to be okay now. That's okay though. That's absolutely fine. What we will do is just amend the bend, if you will. Okay, that sounds like some merch, doesn't it? Maybe we can get a t shirt with amend the bend on it. I don't know. <laughs> I guess we'll see. Okay, cool. So then I'm just going to extend the main street out to like here. And then we're going to switch back to that uh, high speed road. And then we're just going to use this as like a secondary um, entrance and exit into Francis. So if they're wanting to come into the town, they don't have to head all the way down this road um, through the ferry port and then up uh, into Francis itself. There was a little quicker access route there. Okay. But, you know, there we go. Just got some really basic road frames in respecting the road guidelines, uh, leaving some distance between the industry theme of Francis. So it's not too bad, is it? It's not too bad. Right. Cool. So go ahead and get the trains flowing. Get some electricity over here as well. And then we can start having a look at some zoning and asset placements too. So we've also got our passenger train stopping here now as well, which of course goes deep into the rest of New York. Uh, this is a, a big old passenger boy. Uh, we are getting a little bit of cargo trains waiting. It possibly could be a good idea to add a little bypass route onto this. But uh, the train traffic isn't horrendous, so we can probably leave it. This is a big old line, so it's not going to back up too much. Okay, yeah, it does flow after a little bit. Train stopping here as well. 
Not too many people getting off yet, of course, but there's not much reason for them to. Uh, so let's start zoning up. So of course, specific zoning is always welcome uh, with builds like this, although not too much with uh, sort of European suburbia. You can be fairly sparing with the sizes and the zones of these sorts of type of buildings. We know that we like these ones. So any obvious shapes that you can find uh, to fill in will also be welcome. Same thing over here too. And then again, I want lots of very um, specific commercial uh, around my sort of town centre here. Eyeing up uh, the more obvious shapes that we can zone. Some two deeps will be welcome. Uh, plenty of commercial facing into the central park space. I've also thrown down a dog park just so the electricity would jump up here. Okay, and then a little bits over there as well. Let's go for some services. Definitely the, the new um, historical uh, police and fire stations will be very welcome here. So let's add in uh, our local fire station. Why don't we have this again as part of the town centre? And then the same thing again with the old historical police station. Maybe we can have this sat against the main street here. Is that going to be okay? And I don't think I'm sort of against using any f more of these little assets here as part of the town centre design. You know, it's just going to be another hotel vibe. They really lend themselves just so tremendously well to sort of these rural sorts of builds, don't they, these assets? Alright. Cool. We are getting train traffic there, aren't we? Yes, we are. I actually wonder if the AI is going to uh, prefer an option as a bypass rather than going through the station. I guess we'll find out together. I'm not entirely sure if it will. Um, I doubt the cargo trains will actually use that. We might have to find another way to get them to go around. And as I say that, the cargo trains immediately use it. <laughs> so there we go. Problem solved. Fantastic. Cool. Alright. It is raining in Newbioke as well. Um, plenty of historical vibes through here today as well. Uh, I don't want nasty assets generating. Things like the big bite. I'm not a massive lover of it here. Uh, laundromat absolutely can be part of our town centre design. The marketplace is a good shout. Let this one level up. That can level up as well. Uh, these guys are definitely going to need a school. Uh, how are we doing for elementary and high school education in Nubia? It's not too bad. Uh, let's have a little look at what we can do with our high school. So I think I want the European high school here. And I can envision something that the European high school is going to be kind of orientated against the entrance road into town. I think that's going to be quite nice. So let's have a little play with that idea. Um, if we can have it, we might as well leave three tiles. That's kind of the magic number for detailing, isn't it? Okay, again, I think it's just going to be have, or going to be a nice asset to have uh, positioned against the town entrance here. But I can definitely see that its that orientation does indeed want to be shifted. So let's knock it onto, yeah, just exposing that inner courtyard to the road. I think it's going to be a nice idea. So just a little high school on the outside of town there. It's not going to be uh, horrendous. And I think we can probably accompany that with a couple of uh, tennis courts as well. And now we can start to get involved in path detailing. So always leave space between your assets or pathways. It's going to massively increase uh, the walkability of your town. Go ahead and bring in... Yes, we're not, we're not going to leave that one there. Uh, there's definitely opportunity for walkability between these road networks. We'll just lose that little tile of zone and that's going to be okay. Uh, little spaces like this as well, um, absolutely uh, ideal for it. Things like that you can probably bend off uh, down and around here as well, I imagine. Alright, cool. And then why don't we use this space here uh, for something of a little elementary campus if we want to. Uh, so let's go for one of the base game uh, elementaries. Okay, that's not going to be the worst thing ever. And then let's come into some of our park props. So let's first of all stop by Park Life. And then we will grab uh, a couple of uh, the sand boxes over here. Oh, this actually wants to be a little bit of terrain work, doesn't it? It's just ever so slightly on a little cutaway there that I don't want. Let's just push that back a little. Okay, we can use that groove for detailing. We'll factor it into the town. So let's throw down a couple of little sandboxes here. Right. Then come into our props menu, uh, where we can possibly find uh, a little pavilion up here, uh, alongside a bunch of uh, child-themed props like jungle gyms, slides, etc. Unfortunately, we don't get access to the swing set uh, without find it. It is incredibly annoying, but you can sort of make do without it. Okay. 
then a few little merry-go-rounds, etc. Maybe yeah, the occasional bench. Okay, just, you know, a collection of these sorts of props will go a long way for just extending out these assets. Uh, we could even go for the actual part life playground if we wanted to. Uh, just so we can see some of actual animated sims that are in the school. You can do that. I'm not going to use it today, but it's there as an option if you want to. Okay, and then let's go ahead now. Let's come off the grid snapping. Or all snapping, really. And then I want to mark out a little area around those props that we've drawn in. And then complement that with uh, a little bit of fencing. Let's go for... Yeah, we will allow this entrance to actually connect into the road. Something like that. Okay, and then think of perhaps a little sort of live oak line along the side. Maybe one in the middle there as well. And perhaps some more tasteful uh, child-friendly trees. Whatever that actually is. A child-friendly tree. I guess a jacaranda. I guess a kid would enjoy looking at a pink tree, right? Okay, probably thinks it's made out of candy floss or something. And then some little bushes around the bottom of those. Okay, maybe another bench perhaps for the uh, you know teacher that's on duty for watching over the kids during this particular playtime has a place to chill. Then we can just give a lot more personality to a really basic level um, elementary school like that. Just buy a few props on, on the back side of it. Alongside the ones that are already there. And then we can just have that happy little school campus. Uh, that big terrain layer that we dug out can probably now be brought back in. Uh, to hold some zoning. Now we know where our little district is ending. There we go. And then we can just go hello people to a bunch of new zoning. That's going to be fine. Uh, also find that sort of like forested areas between sort of rural towns can really help accentuate the rural vibe. So I think behind all this commercial here, I'm just going to go for the classic forest pine spam. Okay, so no zone in there. But having little plots of sort of forest within the town itself uh, will make a big difference. Don't want repeated assets, I'm happy for one central hotel. Penny's Diner, absolutely wonderful for the, the sort of vibe. I think we'll leave the big bite in. Let's go for some more zone in there too. You know, just be careful and choosy with what assets are allowed to be part of your town. Again, if you have Find It on the PC, for for God's sake, just play with Find It. <laughs> it make your life a lot easier. Okay, but now we can just see a little bit of forestry as some buildings starting to prop up around Francis. It's all really starting to piece together, isn't it? There we go, getting lots of people uh, mooching about through here now, which is wonderful to see. Yeah, so the, the trains that aren't coming down this line now, um, are using that as an off-cut. I will tidy up these connections. I think that's a little bit severe for a train. But uh, it seems that the AI does enjoy the bypass if they're not coming through the station to drop off passengers, uh, which is handy to see. Yeah, there we go. Cool. Let's do a little bit of green belt together. All right, let's go ahead and grab a little bit of pathway. And let's just meander this around. Several different little angles. Let's go for one up there. Up here too. Okay, any more park assets will always be welcome. Uh, perhaps a little uh, gazebo. Perhaps maybe just in this little space here with a few trees around it isn't going to be the worst thing ever. We can actually remove uh, this power line now. Of course the power will eventually uh, jump through from area to area. But we do need to supply it for the time being. Cool. Definitely want to pay some path respect to these assets that are up here. So let's come into the grid. And then a straight road tool. Yeah, and then I really, I just want to come up to where this asset is. Let's come out of the grid and I'll go to angle. With no road length. Yeah, there we go. And then I'll bring it back down this side. So we can bring it a little bit further up than that, does it? Yes, it does. There we go. Connect all that in. Let's go for... Actually delete this section first and then get it in the middle. You're not going to be... No, I guess centralization doesn't really matter here. I'm just being too picky. It's okay. <laughs> Let's not worry too much about it. Okay, so some little pathway action between these assets and then... Uh, again, I think a gazebo actually would work really quite nicely here too. Get a few trees around it as well. And here we go. Let's go ahead and throw in some more trees there. Maybe a couple of little roadie bushes around the edge of it. 
So it just fills some sensible space between those two more obvious sort of styled or stylized uniques, right? Okay, I don't think a, a little gentle cluster of repeated linden is going to be the worst thing in the world here either. Okay. There we go. See how much of the forest in the town really helps with the raw vibes? I think it does. Yep, I think a little bit more commercial on the entrance into town here as well would also be welcome. And possibly over here as well again, but really staying away from any larger assets. Um, it will really hurt the theme of a rural build if you allow large assets to be part of But the central hotel is about my height threshold. Okay, no taller than this, really. Wonderful. So I'd love to get people using the pathway uh, through this sort of central bit of area rather than, than walking down the sides. So we can do this by generating a pedestrian crossing uh, on the road. So let's do a little stretch of regular road by 200 and then we'll switch to a two lane with median and uh, which will generate the pedestrian crossings for us outside the train station if you have traffic manager or node controller you can do that with the mods as well there we go yes that's what we want use my pathways yes please we'll also do the same thing over here again as well to encourage them to take this park over here so again we're going to do that we're going to do 200 of the regular road and then we'll switch to the grass median which will give us the pedestrian crossing. And to hopefully encourage them through the park. Also a great way of encouraging people down park life cheeses by generating these pedestrian crosses in vanilla as well. Okay. We haven't really done a park life cheese in Newbio, have we? Maybe we can do an episode on park life cheeses. Is the one over here? This would be an immense area to park life cheese, actually, just because there's so many people walking through this point. Yeah, I don't know why I haven't cheesed this. Great, isn't it? <laughs> so many walking sims. Yes, please. But anyway, let's not get distracted by walkability of all areas. Okay, there we go. Oh, see, you know, we have had this building come in, so that's an interesting choice. Usually, I'd be getting that one to go away. Um, but I think the red brick and kind of the order fire escape there actually lends itself quite nicely into the theme of what I'm trying to do. So I think I will leave it in. Okay, there's a Penny's here. I do like a Penny's Diner. So then we'll have that one in too. Okay, cool. This is all growing up. This is all going swimmingly well. Uh, again, we'll leave this for uh, perhaps the occasional commercial block with a complementary pathway. I hope this is helpful as well. Sort of rural towns, they can be, especially if you're in nine tiles, they can be hard to achieve, but sort of talking through the thought process of how we develop them some different ideas that can be brought into your own sort of themes and cities. I hope it's helpful, piecing these little towns together. But lots of people using the trains now, which is wonderful. This is really what we wanted to see. There we go. See, there we go. That's a enormously offensive asset. No, thank you. Really hurts the vibe, doesn't it? Happy with the coin laundry and all this European or uh, content creator stuff that's popping up. University City is the word I'm looking for. Yep, okay, so just we've got a little bit of commercial on the way into town there before that forest boundary kicks back in. I think a water tower is also really welcome for rural builds. Now, where do we want this? Let's have this maybe up on this spot here. Okay, let's throw that in. And then we can just create a little sort of rural maintenance area if we like around the water tower. Let's go ahead and give it a dirt pathway just off of the road, and then a earthquake sensor from the Natural Disasters DLC um, has that sort of like little maintenance shed vibe, if you like, for lack of a better term. And then let's go with a little bit of forestry fencing, just to sort of wrap that all up. Maybe one singular tree, maybe a live oak in the back. And then we can do that sort of pine spam around the edge of it. And then we can allow our zone in to come back in behind it where some more houses uh, will sit and live. Okay. Cool. So just on the approach into town now, rather than just having another water tower to satisfy the water demand, we've got some commercial that's been specifically chosen to be part of the rural entrance. Okay, and then we come into the town, we can see some trees, and we've got a little 
water tower there with its maintenance shed where maybe the tools to repair it are stored by the local watermen or whatever the people are called that repair water towers in real life, not entirely sure. I guess plumbers, right, would be the phrase. <laughs> I don't know why I'm trying to find a different word for that. Okay, oh yes, look. Look how they're literally driving out of the door of the station. They're not even waiting to pocket car anymore. But whatever, they'll be okay. Uh, so one more thing I want to do before we have a look at detailing time lapse and expanding some of the vibes and kind of wrapping Francis together uh, is going to be bringing the bus line up from the ferry stop. So we've got one here. So I don't want it to come or to move its stop from the ferry depot, of course. But on its way out of the ferry depot, I want it to come up and into Francis. So can we bring it here? Your obvious point is to go and stop outside the train station, isn't it? Yeah, so we'll bring it into Francis. It can stop at the train station. People can get on there. I will also leave another stop on the way out of town. So they don't have to sort of walk all the way up to the train station. And then rather than bring it back into the ferry terminal here, I'm just going to have a little stop about here. Okay. So now that bus is going to stop on both sides of the road as it comes in and out of Francis. Like if we didn't have this road, this stop here then they wouldn't be able to get back onto the ferry depot from Francis, if that makes sense. I hope that does make sense. I think I've explained that well enough. <laughs> I, guess, I guess we'll see. Okay, so yes, he should now be going up here. Let's go ahead and take a little a first person ride with him, shall we? See what we sort of get an impression of. So lots more forest lining on the left here, definitely. A little bit of nature reserve fencing might also be quite tasteful. There we go, we're coming into town now. We slow down as we hit these roads. A few people enjoying the commercial. The right space, of course, here will be decorated up to complement the high school. Let me just stop and pause and grab the asset. Oh, it wants workers. I don't want that gas station to abandon. <laughs> That's like the perfect asset for me. Uh, let's go ahead and zone up some of these squares over here. Right. We know that we want all this to be European suburbia. And then same through here as well. And again, that, that's probably the extent um, that I want for the town of Francis. Again, I don't want it to get too big. Just a little cluster of commercial, residential and farming. Yeah, that's all I really want it to be. Okay, but anyway, we now got the little bus stop uh, directly outside the train station. So lots more public transport convergence. Always a good thing, right? I uh, definitely don't want the traffic lights here, though. So let's turn those off together. There we go. Bye. It's a really fun piecing these all towns together. Oh, Catfish Cafe. Let me get it. Sorry, I'm seeing all my favoured assets come in here. <laughs> that's, a, that's a workshop asset. That should not be here. Let me delete that one. Looks like I still have that one turned on. Okay, and then when we do have some spaces, uh, again, some appropriate commercial size zonings can be welcome. Uh, I think I'm actually going to go for... A bit of shallow office space there, maybe. Do have a little bit of industrial demand. And then just some tree coverage between the assets again, just to really accentuate that rural sort of feel between all the buildings. You know, when we're building downtown and sort of larger metro uh, metropolitan areas, we don't have the trees between the assets. They're very much just sort of left to the park areas. But when we're playing with rural themes, you can be a little bit more sort of free flowing and creative with the actual placement of the sort of trees and decorations themselves. Uh, it's certainly running. I love the, how the AI is actually uh, taking this little route out of town here as well. Although it's giving us some traffic issues though. So let's see what we can do with this. Looks like a little uh, highway ramp slip lane uh, off of this right turn here. That might be quite welcome. If we can do that one in. Might just also want a roundabout as well. Also realise I still have my American trucks on. We'll turn those assets off, don't worry, they're not supposed to be there. Okay, so now anyone coming from this road here should be alright. I think a little bit of asymmetrical road here as well will help matters. So why don't we do that here? Here as well. This can stay and then this can turn also. So this configuration should just see traffic move a little bit smoother. Okay, you guys are still wanting to turn right out of here though, aren't you? Okay, I think we can do something a little bit fancier out of this. Also gives us a chance to slightly decorate the road network as well. Yes, I want this highway ramp to come out and then just to curve up and then to come in there. Okay. That gives us some really nice spacing for a little sort of rural junction along the high speed road here. And we've got to bear in mind as well, you know, this little high speed road now 
is feeding an area that is entirely packed with unique buildings um, and a, a cargo port as well. You know, there's a lot of infrastructure that's having to use this road to serve exactly where it needs to go. So I think it's still pretty impressive as to how, you know, well it's handling what is a pretty insane volume of cars that has to come down this. So a little road junction uh, with some uh, tasteful nature reserve fencing in there. Always goes a long way. Okay, and then they have the little slipway in there. So they don't have to come and turn, use this one here. And anyone wanting to use that one has the left turn out of this junction. So that should just increase the traffic flow a little bit. And um, if it does get any more severe, then it could just be a case of that it wants a roundabout. Uh, bringing into it. I think I'm also going to slow this road down as well um, into the median one just so they're not all trying to bomb through. It does sort of slow down here. should just control the traffic a little bit better. Okay. There we go. A little bit of use of ace asymmetrical uh, a slip lane and just slowing the traffic down as it comes in here should hopefully uh, see us be alright. I think again in hindsight we can see now that that asymmetrical road probably wants to extend down toward uh, this junction over here. However guys, that does feel like a good place for a detailing time lapse. Um, really simple builds, the World War Towns, nothing too complicated, but they can be designed in a huge variety of shapes and sizes, different in inclusion of larger assets, maybe a larger unit building in here would be uh, something along your taste. But lots of public transport is really key for these things too, so people can get back and to toward them. You can see here now actually that there's a lot of tourists waiting for that minibus. So let's just have a little look at his stats and see what he's like. It could be worth adding a few more buses onto this route now. Why don't we bump that up to 20? I could change it from the minibus, but I like the minibus aesthetic for a World War bus stop. I don't really want like a big bendy number coming through here, if you know what I mean. Okay. Cool. So either way, public transport getting used, we can't really complain about that. I might want to wrap the forest boundary around the edge of the town and then also just expand our farmland. Maybe just add in a little uh, sort of cattle shed or something so it produces animal products because that will help feed um, our cargo harbour uh, over there as well. And then yeah, just lots of fencing, repeated tree patterns, some props and assets and specific zoning where appropriate just to help tie things together, some rocks and whatnot to I help hide sort of awkward terrain layers where things are starting to break. I'll probably flatten this line out a little bit as well. It's a little bit steep coming over this hill here. Yeah, so we'll refine the town of Francis and detail it up. And then we'll be right back to review it.
Okay guys, let's have a detailing review, shall we? So this has turned into a really kind of organic space. I'd just like to highlight this by coming down to the street level and just sort of seeing how the town flows here as ET floats across the road up into the train station. And we do have our bus terminal now where we've dropped in some of the plazas and promenades, props just outside with some trees and a few benches just as a bit of recreational space outside of the historical train station. And where this green belt has been developed with some green belt patterns and indeed a food truck plaza out here as well again from plazas uh, and then we just come into a little organic open park space and again we can see that all of the commercial assets have just been really carefully chosen to be part of the town and it really pays off doesn't it you know just allowing the right assets to be in your design uh, and actually having the little pop in height with a couple of the commercial assets actually works out really nicely especially down here on the street level as well uh, just like a little kind of focal point for a very minimal skyline if you will uh, and through here, we just have some more detailing palettes with some open lawn spaces too, little gazebos and whatnot. And more green belt designs with pavilions and park props, etc. Our little school uh, sits in really nicely here now as well with the rest of the town behind it. Then our uh, European suburbia has all grown up now and come into the town to create a population. Uh, further down the main street, we brought in a water tower. And again, like we decorated this up. I uh, also brought in a service point as well, so yes, I should clarify totally bypass that point that we turn this road into a pedestrian bus road uh, so no cars can come down here and it's really helping with the pocket car in as well and um, it's really encouraging people to walk uh, which is nice to see but uh, trains are super busy too didn't really highlight that either my apologies so yeah we just dropped that service point in with the water tower so it kind of blends in with the maintenance industrial theme if you like dropped in some of the car parking ports around the high school and zoned up some commercial and actually got a crap load of assets with car parking on them which really helps in vanilla for creating kind of genuine car parking spaces so I uh, made these all historical so that's really nicely then again dropped in some more greenhouses and a slaughterhouse into the farm district just so it's producing uh, a little bit more material for us because the port uh, over in the harbour um, does require animal products so uh, we're now able to feed that a little bit more efficiently which is always nice and then the ferries are getting a good amount of use now too, if we can wait for one here together. Hopefully it's going to come in a decent amount of people. Yes, not too bad. You know, decent for ferries. Um, so that rural ferry network infrastructure that we set up is really kicking in now. I also added in a long haul bus line, which are these black buses here. Uh, they head back over to the tourism district over there. So they're actually, of course, taking the highway uh, back to the other side of town. So uh, it's a nice long haul bus action. And lots of interconnected public transport stuff, which is always nice. This pathway also comes down here as well, uh, which is getting used. You can see there's a couple of people choosing to use this way to get back down to the ferries, which is cool. I uh, also dropped in some of the modern mid-century park assets here, like the Palm Springs Motel and the Diner, uh, just to help reinforce those kind of rural commercial vibes on the little commercial strip as you head back out of town, if you like. Pretty cute. Big fan of that. And then of course brought in that natural pine forest around the rest of the build and did save some space around the fertile land just in case we need to expand the farmland at any point. Um, just leaving some open green spaces over there. And then all the rail line has been terraformed out here as well with a fire tower. Uh, so the lines are properly separated and they just flow a little bit nicer and more efficiently. No more backing up because the rail junctions were too close and whatnot. And I just love watching this little rural train station just get busy here. Very nice to see. Love the train infrastructure in Nubio now. Very satisfying to see all these people coming and going. And then they just kind of come into this partland and just kind of looking at street level here, you get a real sense of just this little open air kind of town centre with the suburb around it. And then over sort of graded this road as well into a tree one. Comes down into little, little historical town buildings. All focused around here. Very happy with it. <laughs> it's very cute. But otherwise, guys, that is going to do it for today. I'd like to thank you all so much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, likes, comments, and shares below really do help me out and bring more people that like these videos to the channel. Equally as much, if you haven't enjoyed it, then please feel free to leave me a dislike as well. Really happy with this cute little robot town design, and it will be one of three. Of course, we've got three more, oh, two more designs now uh, to bring in one which will include some kind of ore industry tied into it, so perhaps a little bit grimier, uh, industrial looking uh, around that build, which will be coming up soon as well. Please do hang around for some lovely cinematics of this build uh, as it sits in with the rest of Nubio and of course the view to the enormous sprawl of Nubio now at night time is always worth hanging around for so please do enjoy it but otherwise I will shut up and we'll leave it there. I just thank you all so much for watching and as always enjoy the rest of your day.